really take a second and soak in how tall the rough is on these fairways. And some of them are only like five or six feet wide, but this is taller than me and I'm six foot nine. So like to put that into perspective, this is at least, you know, nine feet tall. It's absolutely crazy. Now let's go toss some plastic. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we find ourselves in the very small town of Grant, Michigan. This is a course that I've seen floating on UDISC for a long time, but I've never actually gotten out here to check it out. So today we're gonna do just that. And we're starting off with a small, nice and simple, 199 foot hole one, just dead straight with kind of a left finish. Should be a perfect champion rhino shot. And I'm really excited to get this round started. All righty then. Anticlimactic start. This is a very simple hole. We've left ourselves a long putt, probably about 75, 80 feet for the two. <clears throat> Come on. Oh, dang it. That would have been so cool. I thought for sure that was in. Dang it. Just so we're all on the same page, you do not want to kick left off the fairways because we will end up in that, which might be where it got the name, the jungle. As it turns out, we start... Oh, what was that? This thing was on my neck. They do not play around out here in Grant. Oh my gosh. Okay, it turns out we started on hole two, but hole one is just a wide open field shot, so we are not worried about that. We have hole three, 199 feet again, basically dead straight. This basket is pretty protected, but we're just going to take our rhino and send it up there one more time. <clears throat> All right, that should be perfect. <laughs> that beetle was trying to end it. You know what I mean? It was going right for the neck. Really happy with that tee shot. As you guys know, I don't normally film these shorter style courses, but like a lot of you around the US right now, Michigan is in the middle of a crazy heat wave. First thing this morning when I took off to come here, it was already like 84, 85 degrees, and it is super humid. So I figured it's a good chance to play a smaller course. Plus it's one of the lowest rated courses that we have filmed in a long time. And sometimes that just ends up being fun. You just try to focus on other stuff going on around you. It's only 3.5 stars. So let's see what we can find here at the jungle. Hole four, it's only 162 feet. Nothing special going on here. Just a pretty simple dead straight shot. We are just gonna send our envy up there. Oh man, I was too far leaned over to even see that tree. I thought we had a chance of going in. If the whole course is like this, we might catch ourselves an ace today. For the two. Hole five, we have no T sign. I'm guessing this is just a pretty standard hyzer shot. The basket's set up on this two track somewhere. We're just gonna take our scepter, rip it down the side, and hopefully end up with a pot. Oh, the wind pushed us in a weird direction, but let's go see what we have. Surprisingly, the scepter didn't hyzer enough, and I can tell you guys for a fact, there's at least three ticks crawling up my legs right now. We have left ourselves a long putt, probably about 35, 40 feet for the two. Oh man, I really hope we don't have a whole round of those kind of long, basket hit pots. 
Pull six, and this is a very tricky line. It's 192 feet. It looks like it's pushing you for a turnover sidearm line, but that would be very finicky. I'm not the best at those. There is this sneaky kind of backdoor force over lane, and that's what I'm gonna take with our Rhino. All right, well, we actually hit the ante line and then we caught a tree up there, so. You know, I'm not too mad about that. First time trying to really ante the rhino. So here's where the rhino ended up. I don't know if you guys can hear that. There is some ridiculously loud noises going on around here. I have no idea what that is over there. We have left ourselves a long putt, probably about 50 feet through the jungle. <laughs> eh, not great. For the par, I don't want to sound repetitive, but I know a lot of people watch my videos when they're planning to maybe visit a course that they've never been to. Guys, this rough is probably the worst rough I've ever been in. Definitely top three I've ever been in playing disc golf. It is nothing but prickers, and there are so many just nettle, stinging nettle plants hidden in all that. If you're wearing shorts, my legs are in excruciating pain right now. I did not expect that, so just make sure you wear pants. It is brutal absolutely brutal hole seven it's only 177 feet we are throwing completely blind pretty decent ante shot we have here so we are going to full send our envy oh, i'm gonna guess that was a little too much ante i hope that's not in the thick pricker bushes somewhere Wow, I did not expect this at all. It really opens up here. I am not mad about that. Unfortunately, it is blowing about 25 today, so that's about to really come into play. Hole eight, 379 feet, dead straight. Normally, I would love to go with the orc on this hole, but I do not want to risk throwing that thing either direction of this fairway. I have no idea which direction this wind is blowing in, but we are gonna full send our Wraith. All right, nothing too fancy, but we will have a long pot. I will gladly take that. We did get about pin high, but as you guys saw, we didn't really get any turn on that throw like I expected. Hopefully we can knock down this long putt to save our two. Oh, not a great putt. Hold 12. We're not on hold 12 yet. Dang it. Hole nine, 222 feet, an absolute right turn. After about 200 feet, we are gonna go with the forehand and we're gonna send our scepter. Oh man, I knew I should have just taken the envy and thrown it straight. Was trying to mix it up. I don't even know if we're gonna find that. Here's where the scepter ended up. As expected, not a great lie at all. I do think I can lean out and send a full any putt though. Nope. Gosh dang it. Oh, we just made this hole way harder than it needed to be. For today's hole nine break, I wanna keep it nice, short, and simple, but I would love to see you guys spark some conversation in the comments below. Moving forward, what do you think is gonna be the next big step in the disc itself technology. I have voiced my opinion before how I think every mold of disc that has ever needed to be made is made, but we all know at some point in time there will be some kind of breakthrough in the technology game as far as how the disc is designed and shaped, and I want to know what you guys think it might be. I think it's safe to say that we have tapped into all of the extremes. They've kind of been the big craze the last two-ish years. We had the tilt come out, extremely overstable. People loved it. The glitch trash can lid disc kind of came back even though they were way more popular in the 90s. And then we had that like very flippy stage, you know, the Rolo came out. That was a big deal. But honestly, that just seemed like a paradox to be honest with you guys. 
So what do you think is gonna be the next like legit thing? I mean, we've seen the Groove and the Monarch, I think, tried to integrate that technology in the rim. Most people hated it because it felt weird. There is a Cataplast disc that has like a bump out in the flight plate. I don't remember which one it is, but guys, I would love to hear your opinions. To be honest, I don't really have any. I don't know what they could do. I mean, even some of the old Ching discs back in the day had dimples, all kinds of stuff on the rim. So, I mean, my question is, have we kind of tapped into all of our options or is there something hidden under a curtain somewhere that's going to blow us away? Hole 10, it's 175 feet, but it is an absolute horseshoe to the right. This is a very narrow fairway. I, I just hope we stay on it. Do I think we will? Absolutely not. We are gonna full send the Piwaka Waka. I put the, the old white one on hold. That thing was getting so flippy. It just cut rolled every time I threw it. We are borrowing this one from our buddy, Brian. It's a more premium plastic, but it's plenty beat in. Let's see how it does. All right, as expected, I think we went too straight in the middle of all that bramble. Well, we have found the Piwaka Waka and several other very itchy plants in the process. We've left ourselves a pretty long pot, probably about 40 feet to save our two. <clears throat> oh, hole 11, 294 feet, dead straight. Um, yeah. We're just gonna take our truth. We're gonna throw it dead straight. We're gonna hopefully find it quickly. That's all the expectations I have for this hole. I think it might want a really long touchy sidearm. I'm not sure, but hopefully the truth can get us up there. All right, that wasn't good. That was not good. Well, we found the truth. We are just merely trying to keep our patience at this point. This took way longer than it should have, only being three feet off of the fairway. We have this sneaky backdoor lane that we are gonna full send with the Pro Rhino. Get through there, go in. Oh, you know, we needed that. I'm sure you can't see anything from the camera, but that was really close to going in. Really nice par save. Hole 12, 436 feet, dead straight. We're back out here in the swirling winds. Guys, I'll be honest with you, I just don't have that dog in me right now. You know what I mean? I'm tired, I'm very hot, but we are gonna full send the Halo Wraith. All right, nothing special, but in the fairway, which here is pretty special. As expected, we did not have some crushing drive there. We have left ourselves a pretty long putt. Hopefully we can knock this one down and get a nice two. Yeah, I mean, I was putting into a headwind. I should have thought about that more. One pro tip that I wanna throw out there for any course designers, if you think the tee pads aren't long enough, just add a pallet at the end of it. You know what I mean? Like that right there gave you four feet of extension on that run up. It's perfect. Just dig it down so it's nice and flush. That's all you need. Hole 13, the basket's just barely out of camera. It's 197 feet, dead straight. We're just gonna send the Envy up there. <sighs> We absolutely crushed that for some reason. I, We did catch a tree, thankfully, so I think we're pin high, but that would have probably went 50, 50 feet past. We did finally find the Envy, and luckily, we do have this little backdoor tunnel here, about 30 feet for the two. Okay, we needed a pot. We needed something other than severe leg pain. Hole 14, it's only 157 feet dead straight. I have to imagine this hole has given at least a handful of people their first ever ace in their career. Let's see if we can pick up one today with our Envy. Come on. Oh, yeah, we gave it a run. That's all we can ask for. Even this one took a while to find. 
Hole 15, it's 246 feet dead straight. We are gonna disc up to the Kotuku. I'm gonna keep it very low, force it over. Hopefully we can keep our eye on it the entire time. Oh, that was actually kind of an ace run. Little short, but exactly what we wanted. For the two, one thing that I do want to bring up, I know I keep kind of ragging on how bad the rough is, but I also need to like own up a bit myself, guys. It's it's called the jungle. You know what I mean? Like they weren't hiding this fact. It's literally called the jungle. So I will, I take some of that, you know, I take some of the blame on myself. I should have worn pants, definitely should have worn pants, but you know, just maybe next time you go check out a new course, Give that name a little thought. It might give you some insight into what you're getting into. Hole 16, 221 feet. This hole is a bit trickier than it looks. It's kind of a funny line. You have to hold dead straight for a bit and then you need a pretty strong left crash. But as you push for it, it's really easy to hit this first tree in the middle of the fairway. We are gonna full send our Kia. <sighs> Oh, what the, I don't know what I hit. I'm guessing a track from the lawnmower. They just came through here, but that should have skipped nice and it just didn't. It's nice that we're finally starting to pick it up a bit at the end of our round. 17 197 feet dead straight this is one of the widest fairways that we've had thus far i'm just gonna take the kia rip it up this right hand side let it finish left we're just trying to minimize how much the wind is gonna bully us around oh i threw that too hard i mean that was just dead straight the skip did help us but a longer putt than it should be we've left ourselves about 20 feet for the two Man, that wind is pushing them around. And rounding off our day here at the jungle in Grant, Michigan, we have hole 18, 662 feet. Guys, I'll be honest, I do not have the energy for this hole right now. And as you can see, our tee pad is just completely covered in grass. It is nice that they mowed. I do wish that they could blow it off. Maybe that's too much to ask for. I'm just gonna take my very overstable boss, push it over on an ante, just let it fight back and hopefully land in the middle of the fairway. Get down. All right, nothing special, that's all we needed. As you guys can tell, it is starting to rain. The boss left us a little under 300 feet away from the pin. This is a pretty cool hole. I'm really hoping that we can get a solid throw with our truth and not end our round on another expedition. Get some stability. Oh my gosh. You know, we kept it too low. I was too just timid trying to avoid that. We've spent well over an hour in the rough throughout our round. That just wasn't good. I should have just committed. Here's where the truth ended up. Just like I said, really lackluster. We probably still have like 80 feet to the basket. This one, we can't mess up too bad. So we are going to give it a full run with our hammer. All right, we'll take that. Now it's time to get out of this rain. And that wraps up today's video at the jungle in Grant, Michigan. And guys, my biggest takeaway from playing it is the fact that, well, I will never come back to play it again. I am very happy with how our course reviews have played out because if you guys remember, the last video we filmed was Far Hill in Sparta. And it was a similar situation. If you got kicked off into the rough, it could be very brutal and very punishing. But the big main difference between these two courses is that dealing with it at Far Hill is completely worth it. Far Hill had a lot more shot shapes, a lot more going on, a lot better designed disc golf course. I think here at the jungle, if you show up on your A game with a putter of your choice and rip through this course, 
best case scenario, you're gonna have a decent time. Overall, the course is very simple. If I were to play it again, I would just grab my Envy and get through it. A lot of the holes felt very similar. You're just kind of throwing dead straight. You might add a little hyzer or a little ante, but the holes are very short. I know a lot of people love that. If you wanna come shred some ace runs with a huge probability of losing the disc, then this is definitely a course for you. But on a more positive note, I do like how they incorporated those open fields to help break up some of the woods holes. And guys, to be honest, the baskets are beautiful disc catchers. I mean, they look brand new and the tee pads are in great shape. The tee signs are simple. They're on most of the holes, but they definitely get the job done. Another very positive thing from my experience here, it seems like the maintenance is very well upkept. Now, they don't have the widest fairways to mow, but still those open fields, they were beautiful. They were nice and manicured. There's definitely some positives here, but I did run into a few locals or what I believe to be locals while playing today. And let me tell you guys something, nobody was out here smiling. I'm gonna let the video do most of the talking on this one. I don't wanna just completely slander the course. There definitely is some plus sides, but I am gonna give it the personal rating of 5.5 out of 10. I simply just don't think the course is fun or designed well enough to make up for how punishing the rough is because you will end up in there. Even if you're two feet off the fairway, it can be extremely hard to find your disc. And I just don't think the upside is there. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Now it's your turn to go toss some plastic. <laughs>